And now it's time to summon the birds. Birds? <laughs> yeah, but I, man, I don't have a good answer that doesn't just start offending people. The... <laughs> Hi, I'm Raymond McCauley, Chair of Digital Biology here at Singularity University. And we are here for Ask an Expert, the show where we take your questions from the Twitterverse about all of the topics that we cover at Singularity. Hello, bird. Come to us. Oh, thank you so much. Here's Kim DeMora's question. Can you disassociate the reality from hype in terms of the future of CRISPR human therapeutics? Well, I actually think that that's hard to do because it's hard to overhype something that I think is going to have a huge effect. CRISPR is a new kind of DNA or genome editing that is better, faster, and cheaper than some of the old things we used. It's what I like to call drag and drop DNA editing. You can come in, you don't have to have a huge amount of lab technique, you don't have to know what you're doing to go ahead and design. You say, here's some DNA that I've got, here's some DNA that I want. You plug it into an app, literally an app. What are we going to end up doing with CRISPR? We're already using it to engineer a variety of microbes, plants to do Ooh, GMO yeah. food. We can go ahead and engineer mammals. We're making uh, maybe even bigger, better, stronger babies. And this is something we get a lot of questions on. So it's so important to respect nature and know what's going on at all times with... <laughs> Got that sucker. Here is a question from Juan Pablo Salazar A. Or Salazar? No, Salazar A. We're going to go with that. How can the biotech overcome poverty in countries where there are the lack of investment in this? So I think that this is interesting because biotech has a great amount of promise, not just for high-income countries where people pour a lot of money into it and you see these inventions happen, but it has a lot of promise for doing things like curing disease, treating environmental ills in low-income countries. Something that can be invented here and it takes a billion dollars to make the first example of it, you can actually then grow it everywhere. Kind of like it takes a billion dollars to make the first pill and then the second one takes a, a penny. With biotech, that's even more true because whenever you make a bacteria and you engineer it to do a certain thing, or you make a new plant that maybe has medicines, vaccines built into it genetically, whenever you make the second one, it really just costs a seed, soil to plant it in, and some water. So our hope is that all these biotechnological advances are not restricted to the top 1%, but the bottom billion fairly quickly. Biotechnology is the nature's own exponential technology, because if you can make one of them, you can make two and four, and then you have so many things around you that it almost gets to be a problem. Ah, a message. Here is a great question from PDX Forever. Can biotech, really? Can biotech make my smell like roses? Hashtag outcast. Well, I'm glad you asked this. So it turns out that biotech has got great possibilities. We can go ahead and engineer the bacteria, the E. coli bacteria that's in the human gut and make it do pretty much anything we want. We can make it jump through hoops. We can make it sense different things going on in your gut. We can even make it smell like the most beautiful perfume. So whenever somebody says your doesn't stink, we can make that come true. My favorite example, though, is from a performance artist who had come up with an exhibition. And what they were doing was proposing basically a science project. Could we go ahead and engineer birds and feed them some sort of a special bacteria additive so that whenever their intestinal tract made their bird shit come out, it would not come out just white and goopy. It would come out with some soap in it. So the idea is every time one of these birds flies over a statue and lands, well, instead of making the statue messier, it's cleaning it every time it poops. Now, this was really sort of a joke and a performance art piece, but people love the idea of this so much. And in fact, the artist got so many in inquiries from different mayors of different cities saying, do you know how many millions of dollars we spend to clean out these statues? that a few people have looked at what can we do to actually make this happen. I don't know if the environmental regulations will allow us to engineer bird shit, but that may be in your future. So thank you for the good question.
Thank you for watching Ask an Expert. Check back next week for a new episode and don't forget to click right over here to subscribe. I hear a whole flock of birds. Come to me. Ah, oh, man, I feel like Snow White.